Hi again, guys. So I'm about to go grab a workout, and uh, you know what I like to do before I go work out? I like to look at some baseball cards. I want to take a look at the 1952 top set now. I'm going to show you the cards that I have. I don't have a lot of the big cards from this set. For whatever reason, uh, when I was growing up, this was one of the sets, along with the 55 tops and probably the 51 Bowman that I didn't end up with a lot of cards uh, from these sets. So I am missing a lot of the big cards, but I do have some really nice ones. And of course, I don't have the Mickey Mantle, probably never will. I have always found that card to be <laughs> so overpriced, in my opinion. Um, and nowhere near as rare as people try to make it seem. I don't know. I mean, I, I just for kicks, I went on to eBay the other day, and there were 30, uh, 30 graded examples that I could buy. Um, <clears throat> even if that story is true about throwing the boxes over the boat, um, I don't find that card to be very rare. Uh, I mean, you have that many on eBay, and then uh, how many are you know at auction houses and in, in with dealers and in private collections and. There are a lot of people that uh, you know invest in that card, and they'll flip it because it keeps going up. It's kind of like Tesla stock; they never make any money, but their stock just keeps going up. It has like a cult following. That's what this '52 Mantle has. It has a cult following, and if you're a card flipper, you probably made a fortune flipping that card over the years. You know, for me, if I was to buy one, it would stay in my collection. So, <laughs> I would, no matter what price I paid, I would have overpaid you know, in my mind, because um, I would never get my money back. My family would probably get that money, you know, after I died. But uh, no way would I ever sell that if I had it in my collection. So you have a lot of people that flip it. <clears throat> you have a lot of people that, you know, maybe can't afford one, but buy it anyway. And then times get a little tough and they, they sell it because they need money. Um, so they, they're pretty readily available. I, I've never found that card to be rare. But that all said, um, I'm going to show you my 1952 cards. And I want to start off with a story card because a few years ago, I think it was uh, two Decembers ago, I believe, I went out to Vegas. <clears throat> my dad wanted to go out there for his birthday, and a friend of mine went out, and we hung out. And so I had to go to the Golden, uh, you know, the, the Pawn Store from Pawn Stars. And so, uh, you know, I wanted to go in and buy a card for my collection just to have a card with the story that I went to the Pawn Stars Pawn Shop. And I still have that bag. Um, and they only had, man, I think they had three cards and two of them were terrible. And I don't say that about too many cards. But one of them was decent. And so I figured I'd buy that. And it happens to be from the 52 set. And it was an autographed Johnny Mize card. And so I bought that because I went in there bound and determined I was going to buy a card from there. And this was pretty much my only choice. So I bought that one. And of course I had already the non-autographed version. And I have the uh, Willie Mays here. And this is a really nice one for the grade. Really nice. Just a classic card. I'd love to have the Jackie Robinson, too. I have an autographed Duke Snyder. Beautiful card. Mini Minoso rookie. And I have this in an eight, and that's a Vernon Law. Really sharp one. Always loved that card. Beautiful little work of art right there. And I always love this too, the Joe Garagiola. And Richie Ashburn. And the first one I ever got as a kid was the Hank Bauer. And I still have it. I think that was the first Hank Bauer I ever had. Got a Bob Feller. Monty Irvin. And we have two of my favorite cards in the set. Johnny Sane. It's a beauty. And Eddie Stanky. 
Love that card. Mickey Vernon. Man, I forgot I had that card. Dutch Leonard. Billy Pierce. Ali Reynolds. And I always love this card, Enos Slaughter. And Virgil Trucks. Ralph Houck. I always love this card too, Red Shandings. Beautiful card. Jackie Jensen. Man, I don't need to work out. Holding these cards up is making my arms tired already. Stan Rojak. Gene Woodling. Uh, this is um, Billy Goodman. Great card. Bob Friend. Eddie Wakis. I always love this card too. Gus Bell. Dale Mitchell. Dale Mitchell, he was the last out in Don Larson's perfect game, right? I believe. Um, Roy Seavers. Another great card. Man, I just like to look at these again. Sometimes I haven't seen them in a while. Ned Garver. That's what's fun about showing you guys my cards. I get to look at them myself again. I come up with, uh, you know, try to come up with new sets to show you that I haven't shown before. Luke Easter. And I have a lot more, too. <laughs> Clyde King. Clyde King uh, was a pitcher, but he spent like 60 years in professional baseball. I think he was an advisor to George Steinbrenner for a while. He was a manager for a short stint. Um, he spent a lot of time in organized baseball. <clears throat> Ted Beard. And... The oldest rookie of the year. I just showed his card. Sam Jethro. So those are my 1952 cards. You know, maybe someday I'll have a mantle. Maybe someday I'll have a Jackie Robinson. Um, I'd like to get the Billy Martin. I'd like to get the Dick Groat rookie card. Uh, Phil Rizzuto. Yeah, there's a lot of cards in this set I, I would like to get, so... Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.